This video is brought to you by Flying Eyes, makers of the best sunglasses for motorcyclists. Their frames are tough enough to keep up with all the abuse I can dish out, yet flexible enough to be comfortable for an all-day ride. Click that link down below and get 10% off your order with code SC10. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show and today we have some really cool news about the potential future for new motorcycle technology. Because when you talk to riders out there and you talk about the potential carbon neutral future that so many people seem very aggressively against, you've got two camps. You've got the folks out there who are ready to embrace stuff like electric bikes alongside their you know, more fuel efficient existing motorcycles. Then you've got the other people out there who are like, you know what, you can pry my ICE motor out of my cold, dead hands. And honestly, I kind of straddle the line between the two because I really, really enjoy the feeling of a gasoline motor. I love the sound of hearing my inline four and my Honda rev out. And I also love hearing the thumpy V-twin of my Moto Guzzi Grizzo. And you know, I've ridden a lot of really cool electric bikes. The Energica Ego comes to mind, and there is no way to get around the fact that they all kind of sound a little bit samey. Now, I've actually asked a lot of people out there because I'm actually super excited about battery bikes. I think they're really cool, and you see Energica and Livewire doing some very, very unique stuff. You also see Zero with their, like, macro transactions where you can unlock part of the battery and unlock your heated grips if you pay a few extra dollars in their store. But the biggest pushback I see from people about electric bikes obviously is range. But the second biggest thing is down to the fact that they just don't feel that connection to the motorcycle because there's no sound, there's no vibration. It's just, it's too smooth, it's too clinical. But what if you could have a motor where the only byproduct of burning its fuel is water? That is essentially the crux of Kawasaki's entire H2 hydrogen powered motorcycle. And for the first time in years, we've actually seen the bike out on a track. This is a story I have been covering forever. Going way back to the Yamcast days, I remember talking about this concept from Kawasaki of a converted H2 motor that is designed to run on hydrogen. And we finally, finally, after seeing pictures of this thing and concept drawings, we finally saw it in action at the Suzuka Raceway. Uh, I think it was last weekend. But that's enough of the lofty stuff. Let's talk about the specifics. This bike is using the H2 motor, and you might be wondering why they chose to use such an expensive engine or why they're not just building their own thing. The reason why is you actually need a massive, massive fuel to air ratio to burn hydrogen versus something like fuel, which is roughly 14.7 to one AFR is ideal. For hydrogen, you need 34 to one. It's insane how much oxygen you need to give it to burn. So that's why they're using the supercharger because it can force a ton of air into the bike. But the cool thing about hydrogen as a fuel source is versus gasoline, you actually get three times the amount of energy per mass as you do with regular old gasoline. However, when you start talking about by volume, gasoline is a lot better, which is why you see on that hydrogen bike, these massive tanks on the back. Those aren't panniers, that's actually where they have the hydrogen tanks, which are compressed hydrogen gas. In cars, they're roughly 10,000 PSI, which is a lot. And I could see some people being a little bit nervous about riding around with massive compressed tanks right behind their backside. And in a world where we're seeing a push for carbon neutrality, I think the reason why hydrogen is so cool is because you still get the feeling of an engine. You get the sound, you get the vibration, you can hear it burning something. And that's, again, what people crave. But the byproduct is literally water. Busting out my old chemistry days, that right there, that is the equation for burning hydrogen. You literally just take hydrogen and oxygen and you get water when you add heat to it. That is so cool. 
You can actually see in the video, one of the people puts their hand by the exhaust and they're like, yeah, if you feel the exhaust, you can feel the moisture coming out of it because it's just, it's just farting out water. That's, that is just freaking, yeah, science. Now you probably will get some other byproducts. You'll probably get a little bit of knocks coming out of the tailpipe when you're burning stuff. You're also probably gonna be burning a little bit of oil because you still have to lubricate the motor. So we're not getting entirely away from fossil fuels here. We do have, you know, to do oil changes and all that stuff, which is a bit of a bummer when you start looking at stuff like electric bikes, which require next to no maintenance, but some people like getting their fingers all greasy doing oil changes every now and again. Now, I know somebody out there is gonna be like, well, we already have a limited infrastructure for battery charging, and we are getting around that. We are starting to add a lot more chargers all over the country, and depending on where you live, that rollout is slower or a little bit faster. If you're in California, you're gonna be totally fine, but if you're in Arkansas, Good luck finding a charger. But imagine if you're trying to find a hydrogen gas pump somewhere or one of the swappable tank stations where you pull your tank out, get a new one and plonk it in there and then you know you turn some big valve and you get a big hiss of gas going in there. Good luck finding that basically anywhere. I think there's a few in California, but I've never actually seen a hydrogen fill up station. So obviously there are some hurdles that are gonna need to be overcome with this project because, you know, it's a new technology. All of these new technologies have issues because we've had a gasoline motor for like over 150 years. I think the first ones were like back in the 1800s or something like that. So you've got so long of a history of this motor that we've been using forever and we're just waiting for the new technology to kick up. And I think as we see more and more of these become more viable, that's when we start seeing these charging stations and these hydrogen gas stations show up because, I mean, I'd love to roll around on a hydrogen powered, supercharged motorcycle. That sounds awesome. So long as you don't hit anything and kind of Hindenburg yourself, oh, the humanity. I, that could potentially be a problem. But here's where I'd like to move away from this particular project and its faults and foibles. And I wanna talk about why nobody is pushing the boundaries like Kawasaki seems to be doing, which I know some people out there hear me say Kawasaki and they get mad. Yes, I know it's Kawasaki. I don't care, Kawasaki. I don't know what's in the water over at the Kawasaki offices because they're working on some really weird and unique stuff. You see their ZE1 and their hybrid bikes, which are actually out and available to buy. Nobody else has a hybrid motorcycle. Kawasaki did it. Nobody else is working on a hydrogen powered motorcycle. Kawasaki's doing it. And yet Kawasaki still has the KLR 650 from like 1987. The 2023 one is the same bike, just with fuel injection. It's so bizarre to look at a company like Kawasaki, which is so okay to just sit on its laurels like Suzuki. And yet in the background, they're doing some wild, like truly Honda in the 80s, cocained out wild stuff. The next best company is gonna go down to Honda because Honda's doing things that are really unique with their motorcycles, with DCT. They were one of the first to popularize DCT on a motorcycle. And now they have their E-Clutch, which is confirmed to be coming to the United States, which I already knew it was coming to the United States. I don't know why Revzilla didn't think it was coming to the States. Of course it was coming to the United States. E-Clutch is a really, really cool option because I think it gives you all the benefit of DCT with all the fun of still having a clutch lever and a shifter. But when it comes to the new technology, I don't see Honda really pushing stuff out there like they used to. Remember that video from way back in the day of that motorcycle that was walking itself? It was a self-balancing, self-driving motorcycle. Whatever happened to that? As funny as it sounds to say, I really think more companies need to take a look at what Kawasaki's doing and they need to just they just need to take a page out of their book. Go do something stupid, do something silly and see if it works. 
spend a little bit of money and have some fun and give us new cool toys because there really is no downside. You're just giving us more options, more shit to buy. And I think that's really what people want. They want more options because you look at a battery bike and it's, it, they're all kind of the same, but maybe you could tune your hydrogen bike or your hybrid bike to be a little bit different. You could get more launch out of a electric battery and then have that top end of maybe like an inline four or a supercharged hybrid, something that it rivals the new Porsches and stuff like that, that you get from cars that are super, super potent and can stomp a regular ICE car just because they have the best of both worlds. That's the kind of thing that gets me really excited, seeing new technology blended with the old. And that honestly is what really makes me want to believe. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.